Hey, what's going on guys? Mr. Chuckles here, and today I've got some gameplay for you from the Destiny 2 beta. It is going to be a live commentary, Control. just kind of talking about all the things that I do right, as well as the dumb things that I do. No zone means no it has been Take about uh, 15 enemy. months since I've played Destiny. Well, I've played twice in the last 15 months, so I am quite out of it. I'm actually doing better than what I thought I was going to, however... I'm not quite performing at the level that I want to, or that I used to. My aim is definitely uh, nowhere near what it used to be, so I know a while ago a lot of you would ask for me to share gameplays where I don't perform well, so expect that to be one of those, and me just talking about what I can do to improve. Oh, well, and the Warlock tried sneaking around, this is why you watch your radar. They have made some changes to your radar though, if you notice when you zoom in it's gone. It does take a moment. There's a small delay, about a second delay, on when it actually pops back up. There's actually even a longer delay when you blink as a Voidwalker. It's about a two, three second delay before you will actually receive your radar back. So it is something to uh, take note of. Now let's try and help my team out here. As you can see, my uh, accuracy is absolute garbage. And that's another change you notice right there. I actually was not the one to deliver the killing blow on that guy, however, I did receive some points as in uh, getting the kill. I got an assist, so that is definitely a change you get in Destiny 2 as well. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. Other games I play do the same thing, like Overwatch. Um, so we'll see how it plays out. This guy's gonna feel like he's gonna push me. I need to get the safety here. Alright. I'll let my team grab the heavy ammo and then regroup. This guy is trying to pick up my spawn though. Oh. That was uh, really well played on his part, and really poor on my part. I knew he was there, and uh, I knew he was already firing at my team. So when he was pre-firing, or, uh, or even I'm firing at my team, I happened to walk directly into that lane of fire. Oh, God. Leave me alone. Alright. We're gonna group back up here. With my teammates, and... Alright, there we go. So it's a pretty uh, level game at the moment with uh, 18 to 16. I haven't seen the heavy used yet, so that is going to play a huge factor in uh, who controls this B point. Oh, three fire, strong. Alright, all right, we all got, we've all got to push it once if we actually want to cap this. My team is making the effort to do so now. So I know that guy's got a sniper, so the only way that I'm going to beat him is if I get up in his face. There we go. That's what we need to do. And then... I love this auto rifle. We just tore them apart. Oh, so good. I believe this is the scathe lock. I would have to look, but I believe that's what it is. We actually need to get out of here, since we are the only one here. And then... I do have a member up there, so I'm gonna try flanking these guys, and they should... primarily be focused on him. There we are. Let's help them finish this off. There we go. Uh, another change they made as well that a lot of you may already know, but you don't need more than one person standing on the point. If you have a second or third person standing on the point, it actually does not help you cap it quicker, like it used to. Oh, that guy got me well. I, uh, that was poor play. I should have had my auto rifle at that point uh, when he had slid up close, and I just did not aim very well. But, uh, yeah, when you're capping, you don't all need to stand in one area. That can also prevent a lot of uh, multi-kills from the other team. So whether it's with a super multi-kill or a grenade multi-kill, you don't need to be standing in the same spot. Oh, that, uh, they just got destroyed. My team just ruined these guys. Nice work. Kind of sad I wasted my grenade, but... Especially with the long cooldowns they have now. Oh, okay. That works, too. What can stop you if you fight There's also quite a big damage drop-off on a lot of the guns I've noticed. Um, with the new... With the way the weapons work now, having two primaries, it is very... Uh, it's a smart idea to run weapons that are very diverse. You notice that guy just killed me with a scout rifle. And actually, this lane right here that we're in is really good for a scout rifle. I wish I had one on my hunter. I unfortunately do not. That's why I'm trying to use my hand cannon. But there is quite a big uh, drop-off with the hand cannon, I've noticed. There we go. As you can see, the headshot there did 40 damage. And the headshot I landed earlier actually did 27. Uh, this gun also, in general, though, has an AoE attack. So that also could play a part in it. 
but it is a uh, quite a difference. Auto rifles also have that damage drop off. There we go. I do have my super. I'm kind of hesitant to use it though because I need them to be in one group or to actually capture and for sure secure this objective. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Oh, sorry. I, for I totally forgot I was an on golden gun. What do you know? Oh, and I completely wasted it. This is the second um, game I've played with my Arc Strider. It is quite different uh, than the Blade Dancer. You do not have the same toughness buff that you once had. So it is very difficult to uh, adjust to. We are going to get the hell out of here. Let that wear off. That's actually probably one of the most mobile supers because um, you're flying in the air. It is a little bit harder to focus on them. It's not like you're on the ground. Um, and as long as the Arc Strider is played in the same way, it can be just as effective, but clearly I have not uh, mastered that yet. Favorite class so far has got to be my Striker or Voidwalker. That's probably just because I'm comfortable with it. I probably at one point will learn to love these classes. I've just got to get some more gameplay with them in. Um, and then in regards to the weapons I'm using, I am using the exotic hand cannon for the hunter. I do quite enjoy it. Uh, we'll give this guy the ammo. I've got a sniper equipped it, but my sniping is definitely subpar right now. Because I haven't played him forever. We could actually kill this guy if we team shoot him. There we go. Oh, that's a grenade. Double grenades. Alright. That should be two. There we go. And they're gonna get the heavy, so I do have to watch that corridor here. A lot of people like to run either the snipers or the fusion. I actually don't see nearly as many rocket launchers as we used to. Probably just because you only get one. And the proximity for the explosions actually uh, pretty small compared to what it was in Destiny 1. They don't have the uh, grenades and horseshoes perk, which I find is nice. In regards to PV, it does do quite a bit of damage. We gotta avoid this golden gun here. That was close. Seconds. Come on, fellas. I do have to wait, though. That recovery time is a, uh, it takes a long time for your shields to regenerate, or it feels anyway, at least compared to Destiny 1. But it has been quite a while since I've played. Hunters like you blaze a path for the rest of us. I could not ask for a better victory. Double kill. Ah, uh, I mean, ending with a double kill there wasn't too bad. The game was over, but... All in all, it wasn't a terrible game. There were definitely some mistakes. I had an absolutely terrible super. That was probably the biggest mistake here. And 21 kills with a 3.5 is not is in no means a terrible score. Certainly not the way that I used to play. Uh, and I did so without the heavy ammo, which was nice. If I would have used a heavy ammo, this probably would have been a terrible gameplay because my sniping, again, is definitely a subpar right now. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay, and I will see you in the next video.